unless there's somebody in here that doesn't know him, then there's nobody in here who he hasn't done some amazing things for. Him. And in fact, actually, if you don't know him, he's done some amazing things for you. You just don't know him yet. And so, with that, um, speaking of amazing things that God does, we want to take a few minutes before we jump into the full Anchorman set, and I want to let Kurt um, talk to you guys. And he's going to share his testimony with you guys, because he's got a pretty remarkable testimony. And so, uh, with that, here we go. Yeah, go. All right. Um, man, I was just... Uh, hey, if, if, if I have a problem coming across, I haven't... Uh, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, so... And we're talking today, so... Um, you know, I was praying and uh, just seeking the Lord and asking him what he would want me to say. Um, and you know, he's like, keep it simple. <laughs> go for your testimony. And then I feel like he uh, you know, wanted me to share a little bit more with you guys. But um, this is... I wonder if you guys are all stunned. Anyway, um, I'll just get down to the skinny of it. I used to be uh, a crackhead. Uh... I used to smoke crystal meth every day in my life for, for six years, a long time. And, uh, you know, I'll skip the backstory because, uh, you know, you guys know how that comes kind of <laughs> It doesn't matter uh, what kind of a background you have or anything. I, I was raised in a Christian home, but, you know, I knew who to come back to. So, you know, uh, six years, man, smoking crystal meth, just, just losing my marbles. I mean, like, we're talking stealing stuff, lying to people. You know, screw your best friend over. I mean, just ripping them off, you know, ripping your folks off. Totally. Just, you know, what people make fun of as, as crack as I was completely, you know. And, uh, but man, I was losing everything. Maybe the bridge for I was losing everything. I lost my job. I lost my house that we owned. Um, I was married, by the way. And uh, we were both doing it. Man, I'm trying to shorten it up for you guys. It's okay. Uh, is it cool? Is it cool? I'm right, sweet. I can't see anybody's faces in there. It freaks me out. <laughs> but says, don't be afraid of their faces. You can't even see your faces. So. Uh, anyway, I was just losing my marbles. Uh, my wife and I were just having, we're on the, our marriage was on the rocks. She, she left me like three times. Uh, once on Christmas Eve, because I was just so tweaked out. I was like making Christmas presents or something. Just, just gone, just gone, and uh, you know, we had cheated on each other multiple times, and uh, you know, heavy stuff, dude. stuff that the Lord has to do some serious work in here to get over, but uh, anyway, that, that's coming, so yeah. one night, man, I was just out on my back porch, and it was like three in the morning, and I was hard to die, and uh, you know, I was just looking over my, looking at my life, and going, man, I'm toast, I don't got nothing on this life, I'm going to lose everything, and, and there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I was an addict, straight up, the definition of the word addict. So I just called out on the name of the Lord. Yeah. You know, and uh, Lord, if you're up there, if you're real, I'm done. I'm hooked. I can't do anything about what's going on. I'm just, uh, you know, look at me. What a shameful one, you know. And uh, it was from my heart. It was in a puddle of sweat and tears. And and he heard me. Yeah. And he, he came to my aid. You know, Jesus, the thing about Jesus, if you read in the Word, I hope you guys read in the Word. You see Jesus, and he comes across these guys that are laying in the ditch, and they're, you know, they're crippled, and they're blind, and they have leprosy, they're shameful ones, dude. And, and they, they ask Jesus, if you're willing, you, you can heal me. And he doesn't screw around about it. He's like, hey, you want to get healed? Get up. Yeah. He doesn't mess around about it. Like that guy at the, at the pool, you know, where it gets stirred up, and the first guy in it get hooked up, right? And then the old guy that was there for 38 years. Dude. Jesus saw him, and he's like, you know, I'm sure there was other people that Jesus could have healed, but he went straight for this guy. And he's like, hey, man, he, he saw that he had been in this condition. Jesus doesn't mess around with people that try out from their hearts, you know what I mean? And so I was just trying to figure out what I could say to encourage him. And I was asking him, just give me something. Because you know, uh, I, I go to the Dollar Life Center in Dallas, and uh, this is the church that uh, I actually started going to. You know, the Lord gave me the, the desire to go to church. And, and I would still get high and go to church. But who does that? I, you know, and then go to church. I just tweaked out of my mind. I would never do that. I would have never done that unless the Lord had started a good work in me. And, and drew me with the Spirit. You know what I mean? He touched my mind and had the Spirit. 
And so I was just sitting there, and, and um, I can't really tell you when my addiction fell off of me. It was like, a, you know, it was like old rags falling off of me. It was just gone. I can't tell you the exact time, you know. But uh, I just knew the Lord was working in me, just doing some serious right stuff. Right you know, He's always working in us. But, um, you know, I did Steps to Freedom in Christ with my pastor there. And uh, and it was like, I don't know if you've heard of that, but you just, you just claim the blood of Jesus over every kind of doorway you might open, every funky thing in it. And um, when I walked out of that office, it took two hours, by the way. <laughs> there was a lot to go through. But uh, and when I walked out of that office, and the first mirror that I saw, this is my Ebenezer stone right here. I looked in the mirror and I saw new eyes, like new eyes. It blew my mind away for like a month straight. I mean, like, seriously, that's when I, you know, the Lord does stuff for you, so you know. You know um, so it's all Jesus, though. We, we get so, we get so weird. I get so weird. You know, we, we think that we've gotten somewhere and then, and then, oh yeah, we're okay. Then we can start working for the Lord, you know, and then we're doing something. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not that way. It's all Jesus all the time. Right. And, uh, so I wanted to share, I wanted to share something out of the Word with you guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys don't keep me off the stage for heresy if I misquote things. But um, it's in 2 Kings chapter 4, the end of chapter 4. And it's when Elisha is in Gilgal with his guys. And uh, there's a famine in the land. And if you know anything about Gilgal, if you look at the, you know, it's a part of the promised land. It was known for greenery. There shouldn't have been a famine there, but but there was. And so if you read on, they uh, Elisha's like, hey, all right, get a big big pot. And, and the translation in Hebrew is earthen vessel, I believe. And so he's like, get some stuff and put it in, make a make a stew, and and hook the guys up. So they do. They pick gourds and stuff. They don't really know what they are. And they cook them up. They pour it out for the people. And then the next thing you know, guys are throwing out, going, man, I got there's death in the pot. And it was like, I guess it was killing them. So, bummer soup, you know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, they're all telling Elisha this, and he's like, hey, throw the meal in. And, and the word meal can be looked at in a few different ways, um, all pointing to bread. Okay? Meal is just, in the Hebrew, it's contents of bread, the ingredients of bread. So he says, hey, throw the bread into the pot, the poison. And then the next thing you know, it says in the word that the whole contents of the pot were good. And so here's my take on this, okay? We're a, a, a earthen vessel, right? Yeah. Okay? We're filled with poison. Yeah. We're, you know, sin is death, right? There's death in the pot. Yeah. Right? And so what is, we get so weird about trying to do the 12-step program and the AA meetings and once an addict, was an addict, and writing the book on so-and-so. And all I get out of that, man, it's all Jesus all the time. Yeah. Add the bread. What's the bread? Jesus is the bread of life, right? Yeah. Add the bread into your life. Hey, guess what? The whole contents of the pot become good. That's what happened to me. I added Jesus to the pot. It's something that you've like gotten away from that in like America. I always dog on us Americans, but I've been in places that we're not so cool. Um, but we, we, there's a famine in our land. There's a fam it doesn't look like it. We've got plenty. It's all green. But there's a famine and it's in here. And, and we try to do all this 12 step program and, and all this stuff, but it's all Jesus all the time. Yeah. We can't do anything of worth without him. So, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say to you guys. Just I want to encourage you guys that, you know, we make it so hard and it's so super easy. The Lord knows this, man. He knows how funky we get in here. He knows the kind of stuff we think about. He says, hey, that's okay. I died for that stuff. It's all me all the time. Where I am lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. He's created a work of the Spirit. So, I just, uh, man, it's all, I tell my kids, I'm a youth leader, and I tell my kids, are you been hanging out with the Lord? Have you been hanging out with the Lord? Because the only, we get everything we need to live life from hanging out with Jesus. It, it really is that simple. People are like, no, but, you got to do this too. No, I'm sorry, man. It's a, you hang out with Jesus, you, you read the word, you, you seek to hear from his voice, you seek his face, worship him. In whatever way you're gifted to worship Him, it, it's all great. It's all good to Him if it's from your heart. You want to sweep a thing with the smoke? Maybe if it's from your heart. Hey, he's like, oh yeah. You know? My buddy, look, my buddy Frank loves us. But uh, we, we just have to hang out with the Lord. He pours the love into our hearts. You know, they'll know you as my followers by your what for each other? Love. Do you know which love it is that he's mentioning here? Agape love. We don't have that on our own stock anymore. I don't think maybe we did when Adam and Eve 
We're kicking it, buddy. We don't have that anymore without the Lord. We can't forgive people. We can't. We can't. We can't forgive. We can't love one another, love people, without first hanging out with Jesus. And, and having him pour that into us with his spirit, right? Like Romans 10, 10 says. So I just want to encourage you guys, just hang out with Jesus. I'm sure you guys do. You look like you just got Jesus going on. Um, anyway, that's my word.